being an urban fantasy book club session of World of Horror. What is urban fantasy book club? You might be asking. Well, uh, it is a uh, sister show, a sibling show to the cyberpunk book club, which we do slightly more often. Uh, I love video games. I love narratively driven video games, but I cannot play video games well or quickly. Uh, unlike most of Twitch. So what I like to do instead is talk about uh, video games as though they were media texts. Well, they are media texts, but taking them seriously as media texts, uh, talking about their th the theory behind them, uh, what goes into making them, and uh, what about those games, what aspects from those games could inspire us in our own work going forward and looking to the future. So, uh, what is World of Horror? Well, there is a specific piece of dramatic box text that kind of comes with the descriptions of the game. The year is 1980X. Disgusting creatures terrorize a small seaside town in Japan as reality starts to crumble and the old gods reawaken to sate their primal hunger. It's a losing battle, but maybe you've got what it takes to postpone the inevitable. The end of the world is at hand. Indeed, indeed, indeed. So, uh, World of Horror, in a more practical and not dramatic sense, uh, is a uh, two-bit RPG uh, roguelike. And I say two-bit not as if it's a, a cheap or light version of something. It is actually rendered in two bits or one bit uh, occasionally. So it's either rendered in just two colors of black and white pixels or with a third mid-tone color, although you can actually set that black and white and gray to a wide variety of different color schemes. Uh, I, uh, I have actually watched some of this game already uh, as it being a roguelike, as it is a roguelike, uh, it is all about uh, doing uh, quick short runs of around one to two hours uh, as you go uh, through this town in Japan and explore uh, what's going on in the in the setting uh, and making sure uh, that uh, you can both solve the encroaching horrors, maybe find out what El old god is reawakening and stopping it, uh, but at the same time facing down ghosts, facing down demons, facing down large amounts of bodily horror, and trying not to die. And dying is very, very easy. This is very much taking from, uh, what it's taking from Rogue, uh, the original video game, is not just uh, the nature of permadeath, but also how easy it is to die, and the uh, luck, the dice math behind the game. Uh, it is an RPG, so you have stats, uh, as well as there being combat sequences. And uh, the dice rolls are very, very rarely, very, very rarely in your favour. Um, and uh, it's uh, making peace uh, with the fact that the game would rather you lose and lose quickly is, is part of it. Uh, I am not especially one uh, to play games that are super difficult. So uh, we are going in with some pre-knowledge of how the game works, which is for my sanity and yours, because I, I, I think it might be a little bit frustrating if we jump straight in, I don't know what's going on, and then die a whole bunch repeatedly. That's not what we need. Hmm. Hmm, yes, indeed. So, uh, what themes do we expect from this game? Uh, normally, when we uh, talk about this particular section, uh, we go and talk a little about the things we expect and then go in the game, play the game for a couple of hours, and then come back about the ideas that we want to take away, and then we wrap up. Uh, because I have played the game already, I can already talk about some of the themes that are going to happen. Uh, this is heavily inspired. Uh, by the works of Junji Ito and Lovecraft. Uh, very so much in the idea of cosmic horror and body horror. Um, Not so much in terms of like H.P. Lovecraft's like unrelenting racism. Um, I think actually if uh, H.P. Lovecraft would not be a fan of this specifically taking place in Japan and uh, featuring a lot of Japanese culture directly, I think um, that would that would definitely uh, make him bristle. Or maybe he'd buy into the horror aspect of it a little bit more strongly, who knows. Mm. Um, well, also there's also the cute creeping dread of slowly lost resources.
So uh, this game is very specifically um, uh, in the way that it's supposed to be quite hard and uh, menacing uh, mathematically is that you actually have two uh, health uh, stats that is being tracked. Uh, essentially your physical HP and your mental HP. And uh, both of those things are under threat both from the randomized scenarios that you can encounter and the various enemies that you can encounter. And you will lose at all if either of those things drop to zero or below. Um, so under combat situations, you might find enemies that will only deal you physical damage. You might find enemies that will only deal you mental damage. And you might find enemies that will deal you both. In fact, there is even a third uh, HP stat kind of called Doom, which is the kind of encroaching encroaching threat of the old god it is essentially uh, the time until the old god arises and that can also kill you if that hits 100 percent before the game ends uh that is much much harder to reduce there are very very few things in the game that reduce doom <clears throat> excuse me so you actually have three kind of hp bars to juggle as you play through the game uh there are lots of circumstances where you can only make progress by dealing yourself damage in some kind of way so uh part of the horror of the game is realizing that these three things are keeping you alive and then intentionally or unintentionally sacrificing those things in order to progress and that kind of creeping dread is something that comes through the game a lot uh, it also uh, uh plays heavily with retro video game aesthetics yes um, so, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, this is a two-bit game or a one-bit game. It uses a lot of old-school style, uh, even before the PC-98. Uh, the PC-98 was a big, big, uh, really, really popular computer in Japan, uh, largely used for uh, word processing databases. Uh, the, the, the early uh, personal computers in Japan were really designed for office work rather than for video games. But um, the resolution of uh, old Japanese computers like the PC-98 needed to be higher than the resolution of old computers of the same era in the UK and the US because kanji, like the, the, the writing, the, the, the Japanese language, um, form of Japanese language, uh, is quite detailed. You need a relatively high resolution to be able to detail kanji correctly. So those computers actually had really, really high resolution and then a lot of early video games in Japan use that for really, really beautiful or at least really detailed pixel art. And this game also does that a lot, which I really, really like. Uh, the, the, the artwork in this game is pretty cool. Um, not necessarily clean all the time. Uh, there are definitely some pixel art games that are very, very clean. Uh, we recently played Star Renegades a couple of weeks ago, which is very intentionally gritty and quite dirty pixel art. The, the lines in that aren't clean at all, and that's part of the aesthetic. This goes a little bit cleaner, uh, especially since because we're working with the limited color palette, uh, that kind of clean, clean shapes and uh, clear imagery is going to be really useful because uh, we can't use colour to differentiate shapes. It also uh, uses a chiptune soundtrack. Um, very, very Thama tracker, very kind of like Game Boy inspired, I would like to I, I would like to think. And then it does some really, really interesting pitch bending and tempo effects with it, which way I'm looking forward to uh, rocking out to. The soundtrack of this game is actually really, really cool. Okay, uh, with all that out of the way, let us get started. I realize now, actually, even though we are live, I did not pre-set up uh, the stream actually paying attention to the World of Horror EXE application file. So bear with me just a second while I get that running correctly. Because uh, you're going to go and hear the game. Oh, there's going to be a lot of beeping. Cool. Uh, we're going to go to the urban view screen. Oh man, it's loud. Yeah, there we go. That is great. That could be larger for sure. And we are going to go and set that. There we go. Right, the uh, volume of this game is very high. Let's turn that down.
Okay, there we go. Ah, that should be, that should be pretty good volume wise. Um, I am cognizant that there, there are not many people uh, listening in at the moment, but that's okay. I'm going to have to, uh, in order to make sure that this is listenable, um, go and check on my phone that the uh, audio is correct. So, uh, sp let's spend a moment just vibing out to this quite uh, melancholic opening screen while I go and check how it sounds like on Twitch. Give me a moment. Okay. Mic check one, two, one, two. Chess checking that my voice is working very, very good with the volume levels. This actually seems pretty good. Okay, heck yeah. We love the fact that our volumes are great. Wonderful. In that case, we can go get in to the business. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So yes, uh, you can absolutely see uh, that this game, I'm just going to move that to the side a little bit so I can go and uh, see both the chat and the game screen. Beautiful artistry. Uh, yeah, 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 this game is in pre-release beta. Uh, this, this game has actually been out and playable for quite a while. This was available late last year, so it's maybe not been available for a full year just yet, but it's been around for a while, long enough for there to be content updates. Um, Similar to a lot of roguelike games, because they are designed to be inherently modular, uh, there has actually been some content updates in this for some additional mysteries and some additional scenarios. Hmm. Taking a sip of water. Um, and we will maybe even encounter that as we play today. Uh, so let's go into the new story mode. Yeah, I'm going to recenter the screen. I am okay with this Jaguar color screen, so we're just going to continue. Okay, cool. So, uh, the game comes with a handful of different options when you start playing. Uh, it suggests that you start with the spine-chilling story of School Scissors if you have never played the game before, uh, which does uh, stuff like explain the uh, combat systems and how the game works to you as you explore a singular location. Uh, it actually isn't super great at explaining the ins and outs of the game mechanics as a whole. Uh, it kind of obf obfuscates some of those bits and pieces, uh, I guess in the name of simplicity, but it also means, excuse me, that it's quite hard to beat. And there's been uh, a decent number. I, I, I would I would feel that actually if you decided to hit YouTube and uh, Google uh, World of Horror uh, and looked at some of the early videos or people explaining it, it would probably be the spine chilling story of School Scissors. So what we're going to go and do is extracurricular activity, which is essentially the main mode of the game. It gives you five different scenarios. Uh, I'm cognizant that the artwork that they use for that is a teenager uh, in her swimming, in a Japanese style swimming uniform. Uh, this game is not inherently horny. Not necessarily. Uh, some of the uh, characters that you can be assigned are definitely classic anime characters and sometimes the, the clothes that they are wearing. Uh, I, I think uh, their swimming outfit is definitely an outlier. Uh, that the character specifically, you play, you can, can play a wide variety of characters in World of Horror. Uh, this particular character uh, is, I think, uh, the, the, the champion swimmer of the high school uh, swimming team. So uh, I guess that's why she's depicted that way to make excuses for it, but... <laughs> anyway, extracurricular activity uh, essentially is the uh, main mode of the game. Gives you five different mysteries to solve. If you survive them all, uh, there is a final challenge uh, gauntlet to go through and then you complete the game. It is quite hard to beat, uh, but that's that's this kind of roguelike for you. Uh, then there is also quick play, which uh, essentially randomizes a whole bunch of options. Uh, also represented by an anime girl uh, with a pentacle necklace, as we do. Uh, this randomizes both the character that you play as and some of the content packs, uh, but you can also do stuff 
um, like, uh, there's also a handful of different old gods. I'm thinking extracurricular activity, you were assigned a specific god. Uh, that also sets some specific rules. I think it's uh, casting spells increases your doom. Uh, quick play lets you select the type of god, uh, so you can have a wider variety that way. And then you can fully customize the playthrough and specifically select uh, what type of character you want to play alongside what old god and the difficulty and things like that. Uh, so we are going to be selecting extracurricular activity. Oh man, uh, I hope it doesn't que keep jumping when the window sits on my screen, because that's actually quite annoying. Anyway, cool. <clears throat> Let's go and do a... Narrator read. This game has a lot of narration, so I will be using my best spooky narrator voice throughout the experience, unless it is a character who is speaking. The city of Shiokawa, Japan, 1980X. Something strange is happening in our town. Robed figures can be seen gathering in the woods at night. People are going missing. Disgusting creatures are terrorizing the seaside. The rapid technological progress of the modern era brings comfort, but also unknown threats. Old gods, malicious eldritch beings who ruled the earth aeons ago, are awakening as reality starts to crumble. Armed with clues, spells, and your dwindling sanity, you'll investigate mysteries across the city and in realms beyond. An old train slows down and stops at its last station. The end of the world is at hand, and you've finally arrived in the doomed town. Oh! Oh, interesting. We've got a different god from some of the previous versions. Neat. Uh, the supposed cause of destruction of the Library of Alexandria. Ha! <laughs> How appropriate. Uh, a perfect black marble statue has been recently rediscovered and is currently waiting in the museum of our town for its premiere. The old gods rule. Both you and the enemies deal extra damage. Cool. So each old god has a specific uh, effect on the game. Uh, all of them designed to be a problem to you, although uh, this particular god actually isn't so bad, because in a way you also deal additional damage. Some of them are like you can't run away from battle, I think is one. Uh, another is casting spells, uh, increases the doom counter, and other ooh, and other bits and pieces like that. But we're going to continue. It's time playing. Click here. Welcome and thank you for trying World of Horror! Inspired by adventure games of the 80s, the visual overload may be a little disorienting in the beginning. In the short tutorial, I'll do my best to explain the various elements and prepare you to fight the old gods. Cool. This is the main game screen, so we'll be seeing all the general events of the game uh, occur here, and it will be neat. Uh, this is the user interface, where we can see our inventory cast and stats and all bits of pieces. Uh, this is my character. I am currently playing as, uh, can't remember her name. Do we get to see her name? We can't look at it right now. Uh, but she is the captain of the swim team. Or oh, is this? Okay, this actually tells me the, uh, different bits and pieces. Okay, cool. Uh, that's me! Uh, World of Fire's RPG elements and six basic stats. So this is, we have strength, dexterity, uh, perception, knowledge, charisma, and funds, which is my money. Uh, this is our inventory. We can equip up to, we can keep up to four items, and then everything else we kind of keep in our backpack. Uh, so we have to uh, judiciously switch those items out as we go. Uh, this is our progress bar. Helpful combat tips will appear. Uh, combat tutorial. We do not need the combat tutorial because I have done that before. Uh, I also realise in our options we have some stuff that we can set. Mmm. UI information uh, I think was one of the ones. Extra math. Yes. We can turn off UI. Okay. Um. So the way that. Uh, uncertain events in this game are handled is with dice rolls actually it's um in the in, when it's when it says that it was uh oh, oh i changed my stats so it kicked me out of the game okay cool uh i have to I have to play again cool fun times um 
<laughs> that wasn't intentional. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. I didn't realize it would kick me out of the game if I changed the stats. Uh, okay, extra information reveal on off, extra math. Let's get playthrough and choose, skip mystery tutorial. Uh, yeah, I only want the extra math. Right. So, yes, uh, the way that um, the scenarios in this game are handled is it's a dice roll where it looks at your stats, rolls, I think, 2d6, and then uh, checks as to uh, whether you pass or fail. Uh, there are certain instances that can raise the difficulty check. I don't think there's anything that lowers the difficulty check because it's not that type of game. Uh, and you will essentially see that you succeed. Um, apparently, it's kind of like once your stats are about 8 or 9, it's a 50-50 chance, which I think says a lot about how easy it is to actually succeed at any given task in this. It's very, very easy to fail. Very, very, very easy to fail. Keep your neighbor on, off, it's on. Okay, cool. Uh, cool. Uh, let's go and actually skip all, the, go through all those bits and pieces again. Sorry that I have to go through the process. Cool, yes. Oh, it changes the god. Neat. Um, I think this is the default one then. It gives you the thing forsaken by god, banished to the other dimension a long time ago. You use deep voice again. Goizo has found a way to use mirrors and ensnare and teleport its prey straight through the glass. Glimpses of horror lurking behind your reflection are just the beginning. And the old god's rule is resting at home raises doom. Uh, so you can rest at home to uh, increase your uh, physical and mental uh, HP by one. But it also increases the doom counter, which is bad. Cool. Cool. So we are at home. Hmm. So we investigate mysteries to uh, take up scenarios in the game. Uh, we can also uh, change our wardrobe. We have lots of different outfits that we can wear. We can wear gym clothes. Uh, we can wear this kind of uh, tracksuit and under. Uh, we can also wear Sailor Fuku with glasses. We are teenager. I don't know whether that is great though. We're gonna be in this kind of outfit. It's nice and casual. Uh, this little uh, robot here has some money inside, uh, which can be stolen from us. So maybe it was a bad idea to go and do that. We'll see. Uh, we can also take a bath. Uh, which will uh, raise our uh, HP, uh, our, our stamina or our reason. Our stamina is our physical health and reason is our uh, uh, mental health. And uh, we can also get EXP boosts. Um, let's raise our reason by one. Oh, it maxed out. Damn it. I should have just taken the EXP. Yeah, <laughs> oh well. Uh, and let's go and investigate a mystery. Okay, okay. Inexplicable and morbid events have been playing your, plaguing your town for some time now. You've marked down five of them, hoping that there is something connecting them. You can tackle these five mysteries in any order you want. Beware, your decisions will haunt you and influence your unsolved mysteries. So uh, there are about seven mysteries in the game, maybe eight, and we're given a handful of five. We have the spine-chilling story of School Scissors, which is quite combat heavy, so I would like a good weapon before I go into that. We have an alarming account of abnormal arms, which is not one I've seen. Uh, we have a rotten report of rancid ramen. A sorrowful saga of Moonlight Sailors and an eerie episode of Evolving Eels. Um, let's go for Evolving Eels. So we get cool music in this game, which is something I enjoy a lot. As well as rad art. I, I like this uh, um, spell, spell circle uh, that's been scanned here. Uh, let's go and look at our... Oh, we, we are Kana. Oh no, Kana as our ally. Uh, we get Kana off the bat, which is useful. Uh, she reduces damage received during combat. Nice, 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 nice. Uh, what do we have? We do not have any spells. We are nice and healthy. Uh, as we complete scenarios, uh, there will be additional circumstances that will uh, uh, ruin us. 
then we can uh, see our, our god. Okay, okay, cool. While returning to your home, someone suddenly bumps into you. Did you know? You turn around. It's your friend living in the same apartment complex, Connor. That weird dude is back. You know, the one who studies fish. You shrug, opening the door. Connor follows and immediately enters the kitchen. While later they return with two cans of soda. Aren't you curious what weird fish did he bring this time? They grin. So, uh, with this being a chiptune soundtrack, the game actually does a lot of fun things in terms of uh, adding and removing layers and instruments and changing the uh, tempo of the music playing. Mm hmm. To advance the mystery, investigate the circle location. We also get additional quests that we can do uh, that improve things. Ichthyology, investigate the seaside location twice to complete this quest. Uh, I saw the creepy neighbor carrying some jars inside his apartment. I wonder, what weird fish do you find these time? Will you check it out? He will surely recognize me if I try to do it myself. Oh, will you check it out? He will surely recognize me if I try to do it myself. Please? Uh, so we can travel to the seaside, and there's lots of different things we can do in different locations. So we can, for example, visit the hardware store at the seaside. Which, let's do that first. We have zero doom. A can of acid? Deals damage to eldritch enemies. We have a shovel, a flashlight, a competent hammer. Uh, we can only buy one of these things before it kicks us back out. Uh, we have five funds, and I am uh, keen to uh, buy uh, uh, something before it uh, kicks us, before somebody tries to steal my money, because I know that's the thing that can happen. So let's go uh, buy the flashlight. Increases the doom a little bit. We now are at 4% doom, but that's okay. Let's investigate the seaside. Ocean is hungry. You're stopped by a person with a knife. They look incredibly sad. It wants me, but I'm afraid I'm too much of a coward to do it myself. C can you help me? And we can either talk them out of it, or let them kill themselves. Uh, this is probably going to be something that requires my charisma. Uh, my charisma at six is kind of mediocre, uh, but I will definitely take sanity damage if I just let them kill themselves. So I'm going to try and talk them out of it and see if we can fix the circumstances. Ah, so we uh, we roll uh, divided by six. We rolled eight plus nothing. We have no bonuses. It dealt me reason damage as they died. They jumped off a cliff apparently, even though they have a knife. Um, I'm not quite sure what the check, what number I need to hit. Uh, I guess if it's divided by six, I need to kind of get over one to succeed, I suppose. Unable to convince the person, you close your eyes as they jump off the cliff. Cool. Uh, and we're going to investigate the seaside again. You decide to enter a sm you decide to enter a small shady bar in the docks. Maybe some of the old fishermen can help you in your quest. However, persuading them to do so might prove difficult. Hmm. I have cash. I'll buy them around. No fisherman would refuse a free round. They tell you of tales of sunken cities inhabited by underwater things with too many legs. I lose one fun, and I gain five experience. Uh, when I hit 100 experience, uh, I believe I uh, level up and can use that to raise my stats, and then also gain a perk, and you can gain a wide variety of different perks. Now this gives me bonus perception, so I'm now at seven perception. Cool. Ooh! Uh, just by doing that particular quest, you may be going crazy, but you can swear something is watching you from the sea. So, this game is very, very keen. Very keen. Uh, just to give you damage for, like, no reason, it will let you work really hard, and then just be like, oh, this is bad for you, actually. 
which I guess ties into the horror aspect of the game. You know, the fact that no matter what you do, uh, life is going to come at you fast. Uh, however, <laughs> it also sucks uh, to work quite hard and then be dicked over just because you didn't know that that was going to happen. Uh, or you do a lot of math to work out how to mitigate, mitigate the risk and then you'll still just lose because the dice rolls aren't in your favour. Not, not a fan, personally, not a fan. Anyway, let's actually investigate the apartments as the game is telling me to do. An unfinished painting. While looking around the ransacked room of your recently deceased friend, you discover a half-finished painting of a woman, her skin a ghastly pale yellow colour. Uh, I'm not given an option here. The scene is disturbing. You struggle to look at it. I fail. I lose reason. Intimidated by the unsettling painting, you're haunted by nightmares. A dude's working at school, right? We could break into his office. What do you mean we shouldn't? It may just be empty, but just because he came back and his classes begin next week. You enter the art classroom. The room is cluttered with half-finished sculptures and bizarre masks hanging on the wall. One sculpture strikes you as eerily realistic. I know that I get jumped here, but that's fine. Let's go and do this. We're going to check out the sculpture. The head of one sculpture looks so lifelike you move closer and raise your hand nervously to touch it. It falls off. A headless person stumbles out of the sculpting classroom and is reaching for your head. So, uh, information that we have. Uh, this enemy has 24 HP. It deals one damage to everything. So it will deal every turn uh, one damage to both my stamina and my reason. Uh, it has power five. Uh, meaning that I have 5% less chance to hit the enemy. So I offer at a... Uh, well, I have no weapon right now, so I'd be swinging with my fists, which is also bad. Uh, all weapons have a hit chance inherently, and then this is an additional um, distraction on it. Also, the music changes when you hit battle. So uh, this particular... Uh, I think this is the seaside battle music, which is very, very cool. Dude. So I'm going to need to look for a weapon, otherwise I'm just going to get my shit rocked. Do I have... Uh, that's 96, that's too much. I can't run. Uh, that is maybe worth it. Is that statistically worth it? Possibly not. Allied to distract the enemy. Ah, so... Uh, I can sacrifice my ally uh, uh, to do that, to distract an enemy for a turn. They just die. Uh, which sucks. Maybe bad. Maybe bad to happen. Uh, I wonder if I can still swing. Yeah. I will swing. Oh, I did damage, and then I get, I, I get attacked. I can uh, spend one action to equip the broken bottle, which is three damage instead of two. Uh, this enemy has a lot of HP, so it's going to take a lot of trying to stab this enemy to actually get to where I need to be. Uh, I can prepare my attack to guarantee my hit, and I can attack twice. Uh, I get attacked again. Ooh, uh, I might have to start dodging some of these, but for now we'll just keep going with this, uh... Oh, one of them missed! Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh. so even though I uh, did the wind-up, that only guarantees the first one hitting, and I'm already looking beat up, you can see your character, uh, art changes as, as you, uh, as you, uh, take more damage. But this will deal four damage. 
And when he pushes it to four and takes up that much time, that seems not good. Uh, can I... Do I have the time to get out of the way? Oh, I do have the time to dodge. Okay, absolutely. Prep attack and then dodge. Still hit me. Mmm. Prep attack and then dodge. And I'm going to save this routine so I can use it next turn. Still hitting me, which is actually kind of a problem. Ah. Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay. Prep sequence. Uh, and I win! Although I've taken so much damage, I've taken a lot of damage just by uh, fighting the Headless Mannequin. Hmm. So, uh, you start with a lot of health at the beginning of the main kind of like quest line, but that is to uh, keep you alive for the entire game. You definitely need that HP uh, for the multiple uh, scenarios that you'll be exploring. So uh, the fact that I'm already at six reason and we've not even completed the first mystery yet uh, does not bode well for my survival. We'll see. We will see. Oh, I accidentally skipped that piece of text, excuse me. <laughs> have you ever seen an eel like this? It's so freaky! Don't you have a feeling it's just watching us? How can they simply... How can they simply sip their soda so calmly while staring at this creepy creature? Uh, I might need to... Shop for a weapon! Let's see. Oh, you can also uh, boop the dog and it makes the thing wiggle. Oh, I can get a random discount item for one eye for one coin. Uh, I'll do that. I'll get a blue gem, which is not useful. The neighbor's office at school was empty. You did find a few jars all filled with weird, ill-like fish. Despite your protests, Connor decides to take one home, which was the text that I missed previously. Cool. Uh, let's go investigate my apartment once more time. Blue gem. It feels cold in my hand. It vibrates slightly. I wonder if I can use that for anything. No idea. Uh, let's investigate the apartments. You hear rustling on the other side of your apartment door. Someone is trying to get in. Oh. Uh, the Apartment Stalker deals just stamina damage. Uh, is 30 power. Is way tougher. Way, way tougher. And is lowering my hit chance by a lot. Uh, he also has a lot of HP. Uh, uh, odds of survival. Not great. Odds of survival is pretty bad. I don't know if I really want to die on the first encounter. I might just have to run. Uh, I take 5% doom and escape the encounter, which I think I'm going to do, because uh, I'm not going to beat this. I run from the apartment stalker. Okay, cool. Uh, I've seen him hide some, burning some notes behind our apartment building. Let's go check it out. Is this eel even alive? Well, a woman jumps out of her apartment covered in gore. Between sobs, she tries to explain what happened. She was taking a shower when suddenly the shower head started spraying blood. A trail of blood leads back into her apartment. Let's calm her down. Hey! Oh, it's rolling under. I have to roll low. Huh. Interesting. Um, charisma check success. Ah, right, 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 right. So I am rolling a D10. Uh, 
10, maybe. And then the threshold is uh, what my stat is. So I have to roll under six to succeed, I see. Uh, the woman swift sniffs and smiles weakly. You feel like you've prevented something awful. And you gain plus four reason. Good, because I was really low on reason. Whew. Oh, and I gained some burnt notes. Legend from the prefecture. Eels tells of small village of robbers who would kill all visitors and dump their corpses into a lake full of eels. Interesting. Connor was right. Someone tried to burn some papers. They must have been in a hurry because some of the pages look salvable. Valuable. Some of the pages look salvageable. You both return to your apartment and try to decipher the notes. That's so weird. Your neighbor really wasn't eels, it seems. You begin to wonder if spying on your neighbor was a good idea to begin with. So, uh, we can also uh, go back to our home and rest, which uh, costs doom to enter and increases our doom to do. Uh, we're already at 19% doom. And there are five scenarios in the game, so you kind of want to ballpark only really spending 20% doom per scenario, which actually works out that you'd fail anyway because there's still some doom to spend as you clear the final scenario. So I don't really want to do anything that increases my doom at this point. Um, so we're going to investigate our apartments. When you stop by home to pick up your lunch, you find a pile of letters in your mailbox. Hmm. Reading those letters feels like that would either spook me or take some time. Doom is essentially the time. Uh, it ticks up by 1% as you do anything. Um, so I wonder if reading letters is really going to do so much. I'll check in later. You place the letters on the kitchen table, feeling an anxiety attack coming on. And I lose one stamina, just for not reading my letters. <clears throat> there must be something more we can learn. I'll try to break into his apartment tomorrow morning. I wonder what he's hiding there. You shrug non-committally. You just wish you could throw this damn jar in the trash. Oh, we go to the seaside anyway. So I didn't actually need to investigate the seaside twice. Ah, ah. It would have factored in. Walking on the beach, you discover a giant charred pit. You wonder what was burned here and why. You hear a crackling sound getting louder and louder, and everything around you is getting hotter. Okay, this man be on fire. I now have quite low stamina, uh, so there's a very finite number of times I can, um take being touched by the on fire man uh, let's uh, dodge oh do I even have a oh oh it's a ghost fuck me um... so I can I can burn material offering and attempt to appease the ghost dealing six damage. Oh, what's this? Uh, sever their ties to our world, dealing three damage. It's a broken bottle, so I can use the broken bottle to sever ties. I see. I can also pray, bow, and pray, bow, and clap as a ritual. It takes five. Even if I don't get it right. Okay, okay. I can regain one stamina and lose two reason. Hmm. So I can essentially either play Mastermind and uh, like the board game Mastermind to try and work out the correct combination of bows and claps while I take one point of stamina damage per turn. Um, I could try throw money at it uh, to uh, 
uh, appease it and uh, do a mixture of throwing money, which I can only do once because I only have one fund. Um, or try and sever its ties to our world with a broken bottle, which is probably not going to do a lot. Uh, both of these options seem bad. I can try and run, but my doom is really high, and I really shouldn't try running with this much doom. And it doesn't deal doom damage. So I'm kind of in an interesting position here of what I can actually try and do to escape alive. Uh, this deals six damage, which is actually quite high. So can I do both? It takes 105 and I have 200 seconds, so I cannot do both of these things. I can specifically not do both of those things. Okay, okay, okay. Huh. Uh, so... One, two, three, four, five. Five claps. I got three of them right. And I took five. I took one point in damage. Right. So now I have to kind of work out... Uh, I need to. I need to probably. I need to probably get a notepad open so I can actually write this down. I did C C C C C uh, for three correct. Ooh, ooh. We're going into math here. So uh, clap, clap, clap. Bow, bow. I got one right. So clap, clap, clap. Clap, 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 bow, bow. I only got one right, but that tells me now that uh, those two last ones are claps, and of the three at the beginning, two of them are bows. So let's try now. Bow, bow, clap, clap, clap. Ah! <laughs> Yes! Guessed right! Uh, and I only took two damage, which is actually a lot. Uh, I've also been burned. I receive additional combat damage. Cool. Cool and great. Mmm. Good. I am not surviving this first run. I gain Corpse Dust. I can gain 20 experience and minus 2 luck. Hmm. Hmm. Resolve the combat. Thinking about how stupid it is of Kana to try and break into your neighbor's apartment, you go to sleep. You spent an entire day waiting for Kana. Where the hell are they? Chop to the skull. All right. Cost doom to enter, and I really don't need the. D Excuse me, the additional doom. We are already behind on doom. Okay. Let me investigate the schoolyard. Oh, a tall woman with unsettling face and a twitching lip stops you. Oh, the new new biology teacher. Could you help me move some stuff to my new office? <sighs> oh, I rolled high. Oh, and, and I've got a plus one on that. And I lose two stamina, and I am going to die. I am definitely going to die before even the first encounter resolves. The creepy substitute teacher hands you dusty old biological specimens. The rancid smell of formalin almost makes you drop the jar. Should fetuses have so many legs? We're at the target location. So after a, a whole bunch of uh, investigations of different locations, uh, it's a fixed number that you do. Uh, you then reach the end of the scenario under which you go through certain choices that resolve. So uh, we investigate the neighbor's apartment. You cautiously into your neighbor's kitchen. You are shocked as you see countless jars filled with eels flailing around restlessly. Where the hell is Kana? I... I found the neighbor, but when his eye burst, I slipped on the blood and lost consciousness. I am afraid there's something in my own eye now, too. 
We must go to hospital and puncture their eye now to lose three reason. I have ten reason, and so I can afford to do this, but... Ooh. We get music. Bunch of tiny eels! Ah! Shocked, you see countless tiny eels crawling out of your friend's eye in all directions. Will they even survive the blood loss? You rush to the hospital with Kana, getting a lot of attention from horrified people. Your friend is taken immediately to the operating theatre and you collapse in a chair in the waiting area. You fall asleep. Wake up, dude! You've been sleeping for over three hours! You groggily open your eyes to see your friend Kana is wearing an eye patch. Not so pretty anymore, eh? I couldn't exactly tell the doctors the truth about what happened, and I'm pretty sure I won't be seeing winking with my left eye anytime soon, but thank you for saving my life. And we end the scenario with four stamina! Oh dear! You still process the events of the previous night. Corpse eating eels that lay eggs in eyes. Sitting with your friend Kana before your apartment building, you watch the police officers emptying your neighbor's place. Eerie episode of Evolving Eels ending A. And I gained EXP for finishing the circumstances. I did a thorough investigation because I, rec I filled, fulfilled that additional criteria. Um, there is still hope, so I lose three doom and go to 19% doom, which, thank God. Uh, they also give me plus one reason, plus one stamina, and we move to the next day. The old god stirs. The store is closed. I can no longer buy new equipment. Cool. Good. We find a small key. The keys are used to unlock the lighthouse at the end. Uh, at the end of every mission, uh, we can uh, use this area to refresh ourselves. I would like to gain additional stamina, please. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to put the burnt notes into storage because I don't need them. We cannot sell the blue gem. Okay. And uh, let's go and start the second mistoire. So we've finished uh, the uh, eels. Sailors, ramen, uh, arms, and scissors. Ooh. Let's do the alarming account of abnormal arms. I remember when it started. The woman next door was strangled to death in her bed with no sign of forced entry. The killer was never found, and the apartment remained vacant. The door to her apartment was closed, and she lived alone. But other ways in are there. Maybe you can get to the apartment to plan to... So the you here is interesting. I don't know who is uh, writing this. Uh, maybe I can get to the apartment plan to compare with other flats. Maybe I can get the apartment plan to compare with other flats. So I can investigate downtown. I'm gonna go into the hospital and I'm gonna fucking um, get this uh, horrendous burn looked at. Emergency department is crowded as a direct result of the weird things happening in your town. You are finally asked to the doctor's office. How can I help you today? Please, please treat my burns. I am glad I have one fund. It has now been reduced to badly bruised. Minus one strength until the end of the current mystery. Okay. Investigate the hospital selection place to complete this quest. Maybe, maybe, but I am also uh, getting my ass kicked, so I'm just gonna investigate the flats and see what happens, and then if we're in good stead. 
So sometimes there are events that are just like this, where you just lose reason for no reason at all. Ha ha ha. Something is wrong. You don't see anyone on the street. And you could have sworn it was crowded just a minute ago. You'd better hurry out of here. The apartment is on the third floor. There is no way somebody used the window to escape the murder scene. Hmm. Let's investigate the hospital once and see what I get. You meet with your new friend who has recently started her nurse practice. You lazily chat on the roof of the hospital watching the sunset. Now would be the perfect opportunity to ask about the recent unearthly events. See no reason to ask, not to ask. Plus an experience minus one reason. Ooh, but that hits us 100 reason, baby. So when you hit 100 reason, you level up. Uh, you have the ability to go and take different perks. So I have folklore studies, which gives me one knowledge. We have Fast Swimmer, which gives us faster offensive actions, and Hot Bath, excuse me, Improved Resting at Home, which I think I will take. Uh, I can also improve my stamina and my reason, and we will gain uh, plus four reason, thank you. Uh, you can also gain plus one in a stat and improve your roll options, but to be honest, but to be honest. Uh, all my items, I had the corpse dust in my shoes spoon to get 20 experience and minus 2 luck, but I don't really need that, so I'm just going to sell that for one fund maybe later. Uh, we'll resolve the event. Cool. Uh, let's investigate the apartments. Excuse me. Do you have a to bleh. Excuse me. Do you have a moment to talk about our real Lord and Savior? The day of reckoning is coming, says the voice on the other side of the line. You definitely don't like the way the man on the other side of the line puts an accent on real. Hello? Are you still there? I believe this raises my experience but bumps my doom, so... Or it drops my reason by one? Oh, minus three reason! Ooh, ooh, I'm glad I raised my reason then. Uh, but it lowers my doom a lot. You learn some useful bits of information about your nemesis. However, if everything the man said was the truth... Oh, that reduced doom. I can take the opportunity to do stuff like rest. What you think I will fucking do? I will use that to raise my doom, my stamina, and go back to where I was in the doom tracker. That seems pretty good. That seems pretty good. Okay. Let's investigate the apartments. Uh, so yeah, uh, following on the circumstances where you can just be fucked for no reason. Uh, is this on my list yet? Not yet, okay. Dark forces scheme against you. We don't know who you can trust anymore. I am now branded! Uh, chance of raising doom each investigation. So randomly my doom is just going to increase no matter what I do. Uh, yeah, that's great. Maybe I should have investigated the hospital twice early. Uh, I guess I should probably do that now before it gets real bad. Oh, I have no money. Ah! Out of funds. Yeah, so when you have no money, uh, this dude uh, can randomly come up. It's a, <laughs> it's a bad time to be out of cash, says the grim-looking man standing in your way. Ah, uh, company, fortunately, specializes in cases like yours, and will gladly help you get back on track. After all, he takes a step closer, 
and you can swear the sm there is a sm faint smell of rust around the man. Everyone has something to sell. So, a uh, jar of blood is probably going to drop my stamina. Uh, fondest memory is probably going to drop my EXP. And peace of mind is probably going to drop my reason. I have really low EXP already, so I'm just dropping my fondest memory. That did me reason damage! Hell yeah! Cool. Cool. That probably should have been peace of mind. Oh well. Everything suddenly feels dark. You feel sad, but you can't tell why. In your pocket, you find an envelope with cash inside. And just take bonus reason damage too! Cool! Good! An atomical museum archive displays a specimen with elongated arms and jellified bones. Lose one reason. I don't know why I'm doing the bonus missions, it seems like it just messes me over more than anything else. Investigating Corridor. Mr. Wu. Oh, I think it's supposed to be Junji Ito. There's a horror manga artist struggling to come up with a satisfying ending for his newest story. I'm gonna share my experience. Oh, I dropped my reason. I don't have enough experience to do it. Cool. Ah. Uh, sadly, you just don't have any recent stories that would help him. At least the public won't get to experience the same horror as you did. I'm going to lose. Why is boobs here? This is. Mm, one neighbor is complaining about her underwear missing. Not wanting to wait for the elevator, you decide to take the rarely used stairs. You suddenly trip, but grab the railing at the last second. When you get up to inspect what caused you to trip, you freeze in terror. It is slowly standing up. This, uh, does reason damage to me, and I have four reason. Um, I'll die in four turns if I don't do anything. And, uh, my doom is actually not that high, so, um, fuck this, I'm bouncing. It's raised by how many? It's 5% doom, yeah, fuck it, I'm out of here. I'm not fighting a twisted corpse, thanks. Um, the second neighbour is complaining about weird noises from the vents when she's at home. taking all the reason damage. You find an envelope lying in, on a pillow in your bedroom. Inside is cash and a note from someone who has been watching you. They wish you luck in your task and promise to meet you soon. Just how did that envelope end up in your bedroom? Oof. Let's check if the Let's check if the building plan. Let's check the building plan to find out if there's a place where all the vents connect. Feeling like you're on the brink of losing your mind, you decide to visit your parents' old friend, your father Yasuki. Hey, kiddo, says the priest, who is currently moving some boxes out of the church building. Could you lend me a hand? This is a strength check. I I don't actually know. I assume this is a D10 that the check is against. Seriously, I dropped stamina. Oh, I gained three reason. Thank God. <sighs> I was gonna say this is awful. Um, li lifting the box, you feel your back cracking, but you manage to get it all over with relatively quickly. Afterwards, Father Yasugi invites you inside for a cup of hot tea and home-baked cookies made by one of the parishioners. You explain your situation to him. The priest listens, letting you vent all of your doubts and anxiety. So I gain three reason, which I sorely need, but I lose one stamina. 
every room is connected by the vents coming from the unused boiler room. Could it be? You enter the dark boiler room and trip over the pipe. Cursing, you find a light switch and gasp in horror. It's not a pipe at all. It's a long, rubbery arm crawling around the room and ending in the ventilation shaft. Coming closer, you can smell something vile and rotten. Uh. -uh. You almost fall to the ground when you see the wide open stare of the dead pervert, his elongated limbs stretching and disappearing in the darkness. Inside his mouth, you find a tiny key. Could be used to open certain locks. Cool. After the police arrived, the whole building was searched. Following the arms, the detective find the body of a man stuck in the ventilation shaft. Later, he's identified as the building caretaker. In his closet, the police find pieces of underwear and voyeur photos of the tenants. Hold on. There we go. We were questioned thoroughly and eventually released as the murder case is being covered up as the case of an unfortunate gas leak. Alarming account of abnormal arms. Ending A. Again, 30 XP, which would have been useful a while ago, but hey. Thorough investigation, I gained 15 XP. I don't actually gain any new stamina or reason, which is not great. Uh, I do lose some doom, and uh, we are actually pretty good now on the kind of doom counter. And the day has moved. The old god stirs. Winds of plague. The weird epidemic keeps staff at the hospital busy. Skipping the line will cost more. That's not so bad. Let's go and take that key. Cool. Uh, I have... I believe in terms of my skills. Hot bath, so my uh, I get improved bathing. Oh, I automatically just go up one just by going to the bath area. Uh, I am going to increase my reason. Let's start a new mystery. Uh, let's start the uh, spine chilling story of school scissors. Hmm. Hmm. So this one's quite combat heavy, and I would like an actual weapon and not just the bottle. Uh. Out of thin air, a new ramen restaurant opens in town. It's adored by everyone. There is a finger in that ramen. Look at that finger ass finger. Once people take a bite, they can't stop. Day and night, the queues stretch out the door. The shambling customers stuff themselves, dish after dish, while the blind owner sits silently behind the counter, grinning and polishing his gleaming knives. We are determined to discover what makes this ramen so enticing. What is its true power? Dog meat? Human meat? Flesh of the gods themselves. Ooh! Discard two item cards to complete this quest. Well, I just so happen to have useless stuff in my inventory. Uh, discard. And I don't need. I can't trash the gem. Okay. That's fine. Uh... Yeah, the shop is uh, unavailable. The hardware store is still available, however, and I have mad cash, so I'm going to do that. I am absolutely taking this crowbar 
Uh, that crowbar is super useful. I'm going to equip that immediately. I'm going to take the broken bottle and pitch that and solve the quest. Cool. You sneak into the alley at the dead of night. Gagging, you look inside the restaurant waste. It's a vile pulp. A few chunks of meat look like promising samples, though. And I gain some smelly meat. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Uh, let's investigate some apartments. As you prepare a bath, you think about all the possible leads so far. We're very tired, so maybe ice cold water is an idea. Let's go take a hot bath. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, the hot bath is so inviting that you spent an extra hour in it. Plus one doom. That's not so bad. Uh, you can see the restaurants through the staircase's window. You watch the door for hours, but never see any of the cooks enter nor leave. Not wanting to wait for the elevator, you decide to take the rarely used stairs. You suddenly trip, but grab the railing in the last second. When you get up to inspect what caused the trip, you freeze in terror. It is slowly standing up. The Twisted Corpse is back! We ran away from them a little while ago, but apparently they are back for more. Uh, they still deal run reason damage. But we now have a crowbar, which deals way more damage than before, and have a lot more reason. And when we were fighting them before, we had like two... No, no, we had about four or five reason, and that was uh, not really the one. Uh... Oh, is this one a ghost? Oh, it's a ghost! Um, I guess we can play the uh, prey game and work out to see whether we can uh, uh, avoid this guy. Crowbar does do four damage. So I could do this in four turns. I could do this in four turns and take four reason. Hmm. So the name of the game now is to whether it would be possible for me to solve the mastermind kind of like clap prayer puzzle in four or yeah in four or less. If I can solve it in four, which seems reasonably likely, I can take less reason damage. Um, Can attack twice though. Uh, it is currently lowering my hit chance by five. My hit chance is currently 70, so I'd be rolling at 65. It'd be two coin flips a turn? Two coin flips a turn. Uh, and then doing that four times. And I feel that I could do eight coin flips and get four heads. Okay, let's do that. Okay! Okay, we hit twice and lost one reason. <laughs> Alright! We did pretty good. There we go. There we go. I was very lucky. I'm lucky I didn't miss a single time. Uh, we'll resolve that combat and gain the XP. The only true way to investigate this is to get into the restaurant yourself. So we're pretty good on Doom. Our stats are actually pretty reasonable. What I might do is spend some Doom to actually heal. Increase my Doom and increase my stats a lot. That's very good. <laughs> okay, we're in pretty good position now. I'm a bit more confident. We were very, very close to dying earlier. Uh, let me investigate the apartments. Wandering through an empty corridor, you find an old vending machine. You don't recognize the brands of soda inside, but you could really use a drink. Let's get an expensive drink and spend funds. My taste seems a little odd, but you enjoy the drink anyway. And lose one funds. Now, uh, when you run out of funds, somebody will come up to you and uh, demand some of your stamina, stamina, your reason, or I think doom for cash. Um, but I don't know We've encountered that once already, so I don't know whether that is going to happen a second time. 
because uh, there are some uh, roguelikes that once an encounter, excuse me, once an encounter happens, it's removed from the pool. So, for example, Slay the Spire will only give you any given encounter once, and once you've seen it, it won't happen again. Uh, we've now seen the twisted corpse on the stairs twice, so there is a reasonable chance that this game is just going to go and give me the salesman a second time, but we actually have pretty reasonable stamina and reason this time, so we can actually survive a second encounter. Uh, with uh, with the salesman if we run into him again. So we're going to resolve the event now. It seems that you were not the only one wanting to try for yourself. You stand in line for hours. No questions fall on deaf ears, and you're shunned. We're being asked to investigate downtown. Investigating the alley. I assume behind the ramen shop. Ooh, another encounter, dang. A sudden growl from behind a corner makes you stop. Cool! That's fun. Love that look for her. She deals stamina damage. We actually have pretty high stamina. So, uh, we're not in an awful position. Uh, we also uh, have somebody who's re reducing the amount of damage that we take. So I have a feeling we'll probably be dealing two stamina damage per turn. Um, right, 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 right. How long does it take to attack with a crowbar? Actually, not much longer than attacking with our bare fists, and we deal four damage. Okay. So uh, let's go and do some maths here. Uh, it's, it's very strange that uh, this is the kind of game where you actually need to pause mid-combat and work out mathematically how sensible it is to actually go and do the fight. So they have 22 HP uh, divided by 4 is 5.5. So it would take me, if I was attacking one per turn, five turns to kill this thing and it would deal me five damage. I can survive that but that's not great. That's not great. Instances where I can attack twice in one turn and then maybe to two instances a turn would make things a lot faster. So uh, let's see how long it would take. Ah, uh, I can get the additional chance to hit and the effect stacks. Uh, but I can also prepare my attack which guarantees my hit. Uh, at my current I can attack twice. I can attack three times actually. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So now it becomes a game of working out do I just attack three times a turn? and keep taking that stamina damage and whether that works down, or do I spend some time using the attack boost to raise my odds a little bit each time? It requires 10. It requires 10. So if I did that, I would be attacking twice at 60% chance? Or I can attack three times at a little less. A little less. Oh, my hit, to, my, my strength to hit is currently zero. So I'd be attacking 70% currently, which is actually really high. That's better than the odds. So maybe we can just go gung-ho. If we swing for two turns and do three attacks, if we are really lucky and hit every single time, we can finish this in two rounds and then take two stamina damage. So let's go and give that a whirl. And then if we don't finish this in two turns, we can recalculate. Okay, eight damage. That's pretty good, that's pretty good. We double hit, we do six. That's not mm. okay. Okay. So now we're in a circumstance where we're on the third turn of it. We're taking our two damage. We're taking our ballpark of damage, uh, and now it's all about securing the kill. Uh, we currently have something that guarantees six damage, and we have something that can guarantee to hit. So we're going to guarantee to hit, and we're going to deal the six damage and close out the fight. I, so, uh, I, just for the record, for the, for the people tuning in, I am a couple JDs and Dr. Pepper in, and I am really, really bad at mental maths, but we are out here, we are out here killing ghouls with good maths decisions. We are out here. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> back into character, good, good, good. The smell of around the the smell around the restaurant is overpowering. Grease, rot, and 
Is that blood you smell? We continue. We continue to investigate downtown. Oh, oof, this doesn't feel like a good time. The only metro line in your town connects to the university and the science complex. It could take. It could take a. <clears throat> you could take a ride to gain some time, but you've got a feeling something is wrong. Where are all the people? We're starting to push quite high on doom. And we're ahead on Doom, but I want to kind of keep it quite low. And I'm willing to kind of take some stamina or reason damage to uh, expedite the process, not gain additional Doom. So we'll take a ride. Ooh, we rolled low! Nice! We rolled against luck, and our luck is apparently six. Even though the Metro car is completely empty, you arrive at the station without any problems, saving you valuable time. It's finally your turn to order. Run ramen, please! The owner's grin widens. Walking through the park, you find a little girl crying alone in the playground. When you ask what's wrong, she says she can't find her mommy. Luckily, you spot the girl's dress and a backpack lying nearby. I am not going to leave a child standing in the park alone. That's dumb. I don't care how spooky this thing is. You offer to take her home. When you get there, the terrified mother slams the door in your face. From behind the door, she starts screaming to get the girl away. The little girl calmly tells you that she can take it from here. You gain 10 EXP and minus 2 stamina. That's a, a hit. But we can take that. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna start looking after our stamina in future, but for now we should be fine. The red bowl is pushed in your face. It's so crowded that you're forced to sit on the floor to eat ramen. Okay, <laughs> okay. There is a yetsu shikamura in this uh, in this restaurant apparently. Um, it's getting dark as you as you arrive at the cemetery, and shadows move in fantastic and unaccountable ways between the tombstones. Finding the right grave may prove a challenge, especially when you feel someone's gaze on your back. Hmm. I actually have higher perception than average because I have a flashlight, and I've not made good use of that yet, so let's continue looking. Hey! Sick. You quickly find the tombstone marked with red string. Under a stone, you find a note film and left for you. Gain five experience. Let's level up. So we can get discipline, which regain one stamina for all past event skill checks. We can gain leadership, the natural ability to guide others. We can gain fast swimmer, which is uh, faster offensive actions. Hmm. So this is the period of time where uh, things can get a little interesting. Um, we're in a position now where I don't really need to spend my level up on more stamina or reason. I can actually use it to increase my stats. So this additional stamina gained is fine. Uh, where do I, I want to kind of push one of these a little higher. My dex at eight is pretty good, but I think I want to push my strength to eight. Push my strength to eight. And then I can use the stamina gain uh, because I'm now more likely to pass skill checks because my stats are higher. And I can gain stamina just by passing skill checks. Passing skill checks is so hard that they need to give you a perk to make passing skill checks worthwhile knowing that that's not gonna happen super often. So that tells you a lot about how this game handles its skill checks. All right. With a slick hand, you fill a vial with the soup and walk out without tasting the weird dish. Pulling some of the delicate string, with put with the pulling of some delicate strings, you get the ramen into a lab. While handing over the gathered material, you hesitate. What should you send to the whole laboratory? Well, we gained some weird meat by doing that additional side quest, so let's do both. You look at the charts and cannot believe your eyes. While the standard test didn't detect anything weird, adding drops of human blood revealed something horrible. 
Whatever this thing is made of, it's alive, beating a soft pulse against the glass. Your friend leaves you with the papers, muttering an excuse and preparing to flee the town on the next train. Now, what would that do if you ate that? I guess, uh, at the point of your intestines, it would be able to interact with your bloodstream. Uh, and the thing you eat doesn't really in in interact with your bloodstream until it gets to your small intestine. Uh, by which point it's gone through your stomach acid. So maybe, maybe it's fine. Maybe it denatures enough where you could probably eat it safely. But that shit ain't OSHA compliance, son. Prepared for a fight, you march down to the restaurant. However, you find no eldritch horror to duel. Instead, you're shocked to find nothing but a gap in the street. You ignore the distraught customers still lining up where they remember the entrance. Investigating the grounds, you see something glisten where the kitchen used to be. Cautiously, you look at the chunk of meat and then jump back with a yell. As it flexes, it opens a weary eye, grins, and wanders off on stubby black claws. You walk home shaken, in your head, you hear the weird ramen breathing in its bowl. You only stop to throw up on the street. Rotten report of rancid ramen. Ending A. We gained some additional EXP. We leveled up recently, so that additional EXP is like, meh, yeah, but it's alright. But we did a thorough investigation, so this is now 45 EXP, plus the 15 we currently have. So that puts us in pretty good stead for the next mission. We lose some doom, so we remain below 50% doom, and we are on investigation four, which is actually really good. Uh, so let's proceed. The old god stirs. Please, please still let me take a bath. Riots. Dangerous bands of rioters are gathering in the downtown area. The police are hopeless, meaning that I cannot speak to the police anymore, and probably our encounter rate increases. We take a key, so we're at three keys of five. Uh, we're gonna go and to the bath, which will raise both our... S oh, no, that's not the bath area. Bath, which raises both our stamina and our reason. Our stamina is now our lowest, so we are going to take a, a hot water bath to regain some stamina more. Good, good, good. Nine stamina and eleven reason is in pretty good stead. Let's start a new mystery. At this point, I have enough health, we have improved stats, and we have an actual non-garbo weapon, so I am pretty ready to take on the spine-chilling story of School Scissors. So let's go. Another boy from your school has disappeared. Rumour has it, a terrible woman has returned from the grave. A woman with the widest smile and the sharpest scissors. You knew your friend was up to something when he left you his notebook full of cryptic notes. I can send her back where she belongs, he claimed. After he disappeared too, you decided to study the notebook for clues. It details a ritual that can stop the wicked woman once and for all. What's the worst thing that could happen? <laughs> so, uh, this particular scenario is actually the demo scenario. Uh, this happens uh, where if you, if you boot up World of Horror for the first time, uh, it gives you the uh, spine-chilling story of School Scissors as the uh, demo scenario to try. Uh, although, without the ability to go and raise your stats and get some good items, it's really difficult to succeed at, uh, which makes it a kind of a rough demo scenario. But, this is our fourth scenario and we've gained some stuff. So we're actually in a position to go kick some ass. Let's get the mystery. So this mystery starts you straight up inside the school. You do not get to investigate uh, anywhere else. You do not get to buy additional weapons or anything like that. But we have a flashlight, a blue gem, and a tiny key. So maybe, maybe we can do something useful. Uh, let's go check the lockers. Uh, we are going to open this and get a baseball bat, 
which I think is not better than my current. So the crowbar does four damage, quite fast, 70% chance to hit. This wooden bat, slower, same chance to hit, does the same amount of damage. So it's a, it's a functional downgrade, but I can sell that. So I'm going to go and sell that bat. Don't need it. Thanks, though. I had a tiny key earlier, and we've converted it into a sport rifle with two bullets. Uh, it does 14 damage when fired. Ooh, baby. Hell yeah. And then I can whack somebody with it uh, for... Um, for three damage. So uh, there's going to be a fight at the end of the scenario. Spoilers. Uh, it's hard as fuck. So what I'm going to do is uh, cheat and just shoot them with a gun uh, and then save my stats. Heck yeah. This puts me in actually a really good position to finish this scenario without d taking too much damage. Um, okay, okay, okay. So I'm going to access my storage. Uh, we're going to take the friend's diary out of my storage and give it a read. Uh, let's read the scenario beforehand. Uh, let's engage with the plot of this game. What kind of voice did I give this guy? It was a little higher uh, and a bit flat. Maru is acting strange. I need to talk with her after class. I hope she didn't attempt the ritual herself. The 15th. I've hidden the candles in one of the rooms. Tomorrow I'll try to perform the ritual. The 17th is redacted. 18th. This sigil can weaken the demon for a while. Careful with the lines. You got it, kid! Right, I'm gonna go put that back into my case, because I want to keep that item slot free. Uh, let's explore the school and find some chalk. I don't have holy candles. You enter the school bathroom to wash your face with cold water. A sudden noise behind you stops you in your tracks. One of the stall doors has opened on its own. Hmm. Reason damage. Yeah. Uh, you might be paranoid, but there's no way you're risking an encounter with a ghost there. That's fine. I'm willing to take that hit. You feel like something horrible is happening within the school. You hurry, and you must hurry and find those items. You carefully enter the biology classroom. The room, the room seemed empty at first until you switched the lights on. You gasp in horror. Lying in the pool of blood is one of the teachers with a fruit knife in their hand. There's a jar of formaldehyde on the nearest table. Mesmerized by the spiral pattern on the sea creature's skin, you step over the dead body and come closer. And then the voices start. This thing deals reason damage. It has 18 HP. Okay. Uh, it lowers my uh, to hit by a fair amount. I'm hitting with 60%. Sixteen is actually kind of lower than my regular, uh, than the thing that we were fighting before. That was at twenty-two. So uh, we are currently dealing four damage a turn, and if we uh, do manage to do fourteen four damage on every hit, we can kill it in five hits. Uh, so this is actually kind of the same dealy as last time, except it's hitting on reason instead of our stamina. So we can kind of go in on. Mm, At 183, so I can increase the to hit one time. So I'm going to increase that to hit one time. So we're going to go in with one with a slightly higher chance of hitting, and then two more. We're going to do two rounds of that, and then we're going to start having to be crafty about how we survive this encounter. So let's go. Oh, I miss all three times! Oh, that sucks. Let's try one more time. Ooh! We're hitting one. Oh, there was I I wasn't checking the thing dropping. I was expecting it to say the damage on the bottom and I wasn't paying attention. I guess that was pretty straightforward. Uh that was that was better than I was expecting. Hell yeah. Uh we gain a lump of flesh. Neat. 
Uh, plus five stamina and gain a new status. Um, I think that kind of gives us some kind of weird long-term growth. We'll use that if we're about to die physically, but this is okay. Uh, we found the blessed chalk. Cool. Uh, let's... I cannot put that in... Oh, I can put that. I can put that in storage. I'm, I'm dumb. My bad. Uh, let's look at my storage. Where is my storage? Here. Uh, and we got the friend's diary out. So we are looking at two types of uh, pentagram here. Oh, the blessed chalk was left in the pool. I don't, I don't have it yet. Okay, okay, I'm, I'm skipping ahead. I'm skipping ahead. I just know the scenario. Uh, let's explore the school and go to the pool. There's probably going to be an encounter in the pool. Yeah. <laughs> you enter the damp spelling. <laughs> you enter the damp smelling sport wing. I'm very glad I'm no longer a high schooler and have to enter a high school locker room because I remember those being the worst. Uh, that was a smell that I'm glad they never get to smell again. That's definitely a horror story in itself. You notice the backpack drifting on a swimming board in the middle of the pool. Could it be what you were looking for? You enter the pool and start swimming towards the backpack. Suddenly, the water turns murky and you realize you're not alone in the pool. A bloated figure emerges from the murky water, blocking your only way out of the pool. Yeah! Love a bloated teacher. Ugh! 20 HP at 4 damage! That's a lot of attacks. That's 5 attacks. And they deal 2 stamina damage. I dislike this. I dislike this a lot. Do I want to burn one of my shots from my rifle? We get like one weapon switch a combat. So I have to be real careful about deciding when I want to switch to the rifle. Because I really do want to spend one of those bullets to kill the, the fighter at the end of the scenario. Okay, okay. So let's go and uh, equip this. I do not have time. Ha 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 ha. Fuck my life. Okay. So uh, yeah, we're just going to have to go in with this motherfucker with a crowbar. Uh, we are going to have to make judicious use of the dodge command, because that two stamina is uh, pretty ugly. Yeah! Yeah, cool answer, Joe. There's uh, lots of different colours that we can use in the colour scheme. And I quite like the Jaguar, um, the, the cyan and the pink. Uh, it's very it's very true of a lot of uh, uh, UK and American PCs. Even though this game is designed uh, to uh, fit a lot of J-horror, um, I, I quite like this particular colour scheme. But there are a ton. Um, if I go into the settings, I lose this run, so I can't show you what different color schemes there are. Uh, but, uh, trust, there are some really interesting color schemes. Some really eye-searing ones, too. <laughs> this, one, this one is actually pretty, pretty useful, uh, I think, in terms of both contrast and not causing people seizures. Um, right. Uh, what accuracy? Accuracy lowered by damage by 10, and we are currently hitting at 70, so this is 60% chance to hit every time we attack. That is not great! So we're gonna hit one dodge. I don't have time to both prepare my attack and attack. Oh, I do! So I get to dodge, guarantee the attack hits, and then hit. So it will definitely deal 4 damage, but there is a chance, excuse me, there's a chance that I'm going to get hit for 2 damage back, which is pretty bad. Uh, this is, this, this fight is not in my favour. This fight is not in my favour. So I'm going to dodge and prep and then hit for 2 damage. I don't think I took any damage there, so that was really good. Cool. Uh, let's go and do that again. I hit a, Oh, they go underwater. Mmm. Mmm. I took some damage that time. I did take some damage that time. 
This is this is starting to move into to uh, dangerous territory. I think I can take I can I think I can take one more round of this kind of shenanigans, and then I'm gonna have to start uh, spamming three attacks in one round and praying I kill it. Uh, I am now bloated. Ooh, something is moving inside of my stuff. Mmm, 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 bad. Mmm. Lo love to feel bloated while in the swimming pool with a bloated naked teacher. Just, you know, just catch. Right, shit. So, at this point, I stand reasonable odds of killing in one turn if I attack three times. Uh, I can guarantee one of them? I can, can I guarantee both? I can guarantee both. Right. Get dunked on. Ugh, that was not that was not great. I took more damage than I was hoping. Three HP is really really bad. Uh, I may have to eat this lump of flesh to not die. <laughs> yeah yeah, let's 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 uh, let's eat the lump of flesh. Innsmouth, look, the ocean is calling. Uh, the next scenario does put me by the sea, and I have a feeling that's going to come up uh, and hit me later. Right, right, right. So I need to go and make sure that that sigil matches the one in the book. Uh, pointy up arrow, and then there's like a smaller star in the corner there. So that's uh, that's what we're working with. Right. Okay. 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 So we have the pointing up arrow, I think. Nope. 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 Mm -mm. That looks right. This looks right to me. Well, that looks very much like it. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, I now need the... I now need the candles. I do not have the candles yet. I think it would say if I was ready to do the ritual. Yeah, 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 Holy Candle's not found. So I'm gonna have to pursue this with eight stamina and eight reason, uh, with uh, a lot of actually quite bad health conditions. We'll see if we continue surviving, but we are, we are on our way. We are on our way. Explore the school. The, the bloat teacher was really not useful. Um. <clears throat> Narrator voice. As you enter the school gym, you notice a strange black doll propped up against the wall. Great! Against your better judgement, you approach the doll. What you see makes you gasp in horror. The doll isn't a doll. Your sudden movement causes tiny back spiders to flee, revealing a white, half-eaten corpse. The sound of scissors is getting louder! Give me the candles! Impossible angles and seemingly moving lines make my head spin. This is gonna deal me a whole bunch of reason damage! Oh, just one, that's fine. I got the candles. Hell yeah. Uh, I'm going to make sure that I equip the sport rifle now. <laughs> uh, this, this, this is a lazy, this is a lady about to get shot. What was that? You step back as a writhing and amorphous mass slowly takes shape. Soon, it becomes a tall woman-like creature with three faces, all connected by a wide smile. Now is your chance to fight and defeat this horror. It is also your only chance. Twisting and twitching, the demon woman enters the classroom, cackling menacingly. Am I beautiful? <sighs> the scissor woman approaches. Oh, currently my chance to hit is lowered by four. Okay, that... I, I, I have two bullets, uh, but I also want to guarantee that I actually make the shot. So I'm going to uh, guarantee my attack, and 
Ooh, do I have the time to shoot twice? Ooh, get fucked, lady. Uh, she does two damage to everything, which is miserable. Um, so yeah, I can only spend uh, two rounds with her before uh, I immediately die. So this is very, very necessary that I have the gun. Eat it! Yeah! <laughs> uh, uh, watch me need that gun for something later, but I uh, I definitely... Oh, sustained... Oh, I stained ringing ears because the gunshot fired. Combat actions are slow until the end of the mystery, but it's fine. Because the mystery is over. Whew! Mmm! Ancient horror lies dead on the classroom floor. Slowly dissolving into nothingness. You find your friend gravely wounded but alive. You help him and you limp away from the school as the police sirens get louder. Spine chilling story of school scissors. Ending A. The scissor woman is gone for good, or is it? You shudder knowing the urban legend will inspire another kid in. This, uh, an another kid in another city to try and summon the eldritch being. We gained some EXP. How's our EXP at? We're pretty close to leveling up again, I think. Yes! We can level up again! Which is sorely needed because my reason is very low. Uh, we gain a lot of uh, reason. Our doom is still only around 15%, which is excellent. Excellent to go into the final scenario with low, low doom. Uh, we're tireless, so we gain one reason and one stamina because we didn't rest. Uh, and time passes one day. Okay. Good. The old god stirs. Yes, yes, I know. I know I level up, but I want to see what this is before I try and level up. And I can't take a bath anymore. Yep, I was waiting for that. Uh, so one of the one of the uh, old god effects is that you can no longer uh, regain stamina or uh, reason by taking a bath. And I specifically specced myself. Uh, with one of my level ups into being able to take better baths. Uh, the fact that it's happening on the last scenario is okay. You know, this could be astoundingly worse. <laughs> this could be astoundingly worse. Uh, so we're going to go and gather the, gate, the key. It's the fourth key of five. Uh, we can no longer take a bath. They didn't fix the water parson. They didn't, they still didn't fix the water problem. It is black and oily and glistening. There's no way you're going to wash yourself in that. These bottled water, do I have any? No. Anyway. Uh, if I had bottled water, I could actually bottle the water in advance and then still gain one usage out of it. Uh, since we didn't get the stamina reason boost, now checking my stats is actually pretty useful. So we have quick thinking, plus one dexterity. Hmm. We have running shoes, smaller doom penalty from running combat. We're pretty good at combat now, so running is less likely, and leadership with charisma. I'm going to take quick thinking. Oh, that pushes our dex to nine. I am yet to run into a dex check, weirdly enough. Uh, but there are a handful of scenarios that require quick thinking as a thing. So I'm going to take that and then boost my reason by four. Okay, okay. Uh, what problems do I have again? Um, branded. Chance of raising doom each time I investigate. Uh, bloated. Don't know what this does. I have a feeling, I have a feeling something's just going to burst out me later and I just take a buck ton of damage. Uh, and then the Innsmouth's look. Uh, meaning when we do seaside areas, I have a feeling additional actions will occur. Uh, I can start. I'm gonna go start a new mystery, I guess. The final investigation a sorrowful saga of the Moonlight Sailors. It began with one fisherman who dragged something truly awful from the belly of the ocean. A dark, writhing ooze that mesmerized him beyond control. He hid himself away for a week, adoring it. Not to be seen until one moonlit night, when a young girl spotted his boat drifting away. 
a single lantern swinging at the helm, and a captivated fisherman singing eerily to his catch. Now more and more fishermen have begun to find the vile oozes in their nets, and one by one, they are disappearing. Soon, the ocean will have taken them all. Ooh. So, uh, I have a lot of really bad status conditions, and hopefully the bloated one can be fixed by a medical professional. There's a chance it won't be, though. Uh, and I am quite behind on Doom, or uh, ahead on Doom, technically. So, I'm going to spend some Doom uh, to go uh, to the doctor's office, because, ugh. Can it be fixed? It can! Hasty aid. Uh, one receiving a stam and a wound. Replace hasty aid with a red new injury. Okay, that is better than whatever the heck bloated would probably do to me. <laughs> I really don't want to know what that would do. Uh, discard two item cards to complete the quest. I am not doing that. I am not doing that. Uh, I'm already. I'm going to go to the hardware. Oh, I have no money. I have no money, so I can't buy anything right now. Uh, I am going to investigate downtown. I can cast one spell without paying anything. That is really good. That is really, really good. And because we're so ahead on Doom, uh, what I'm going to go and do... Sorry, let's go and actually read the text. Experts are baffled by the sudden appearance of 20 stone statues lined up in a row in the middle of the park. Cool. Uh, one of the things that you can do is that you can go to the school and go to the library, uh, and then spend Doom to learn a spell. Uh, interpret. Mm. You carry out a you carry out a dusty tome to the main reading room. Interpreting the old, incomplete translations is a tedious task. Finally, you find a fragment you were looking for, and you gain a new spell. Uh, return the book and exit the library. You can return the book and go back. So I'm going to return the book and exit the library. I now gain the Seal of Bremel. Uh, plus one knowledge. It costs four reason. But, but, because I have um, uh, this additional bonus, I can actually learn this. I can cast this spell without taking that damage and costing myself four reason. So, uh, however, I can also forget a spell to gain one reason. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold on to this into a circumstance where I'm kind of like, do I want to regain the one reason to not eat shit? And then if I do, I can forget the spell, or I can gain one knowledge, because my knowledge is actually quite low, and there hasn't been that many instances where it's been needed yet, but hey, but hey. Uh, right, so we're going to head back to downtown, and we're going to investigate. <laughs> Combat scenario, are you kidding? I actually love the combat music for the seaside music, so for the seaside vibe, so we're gonna go. Suddenly, an empty bottle breaks on the wall behind you. You cover yourself from the grass fragments and notice a masked assailant holding a baseball bat. I am going to go and equip the crowbar again. Do I have time? I don't have time. Rip! Uh ooh, she does two damage to everything. And she has a lot of health. I'm gonna run from that combat. I am not prepared to not die here. I have the doom to spare. Peace. <laughs> Fuck that. That's not what I want to do. Uh, I'm gonna equip the crowbar again. Um, and I'm gonna sell the sport rifle. Because I have no bullets. And I don't think I can buy more. You wouldn't know where to find a buyer for it. Right, fair enough. Okay. Uh, we're gonna go to the mansion. When you arrive at the fisherman's house, it stands long vacated. Peering in through the dusky window, dusty window, you recoil and shock. You find a heavy tome wrapped in moth-eaten black velvet in a locked cabinet. When you remove the book's wrapping, you recoil in disgust. It's bound in human flesh. Hmm, I can probably learn a spell and take sanity damage. This is really interesting, 
I'm not quite sure what kind of option I want to choose here. I know if I, I, I'm, I'm quite sure that if I read it, I will take sanity damage in exchange for a spell. Uh, and that's actually in a reasonably good position because I can cast a spell for free, and then I can forget a spell to regain some sanity. Uh, burning it, I don't know what that does. Uh, carrying the book in general feels like a bad idea, and I wouldn't really know what to do with that. So let's read it. Oh, my knowledge was low. <laughs> uh, my knowledge was too low. Uh, my head swims. I gain some doom, which isn't really that big deal. Paranoia. Chance of losing reason each time I lose stamina. Oh, that's really bad. Okay. Okay. Right. Well. Uh, that was a bad call. Cool. Um, the fisherman's wife lies in the kitchen. Mutilated and covered with black marks. Do I have anything I can even throw away? Well, I can ditch the sport rifle now, since I apparently can't sell it. So... It looks like one of the previous owners of this mansion liked to read. Dusty tomes reach the ceiling. You don't have much time, but maybe you could spare to look through some of the books. I'm gonna look on the table, and I gain EXP. Oh, I rolled really low even though my knowledge check is bad, so that's very fortunate. Uh, my EXP is actually quite low anyway. Uh, the, notes, mm, the notes lying on the table look like the ramblings of a madman, but you can see a method in their madness. Oh, also, uh, I have the perk where I gain stamina every time I succeed a skill check, so actually, that worked out quite well. Yay. Um, surely someone must. Surely someone must have caught one of these. You lurk around, hoping to spot one of them. Okay, let's go to the seaside. I have no money, so I can't go to the hardware store. Mmm, mmm. I, I can ignore it, apparently. Uh, that feels bad, though. Something pulls you towards the beach. A statuette half buried in the sand is calling you. Feeling your hand shaking, you take a step closer. Oh, I can tell, I can tell that ignoring it is just going to deal me sand damage. Does taking it home do me any benefits? It feels like a dumb thing to do. It feels like a really, I'm going to ignore it and take the sand damage. Ooh, it was a strength check. Okay. <laughs> I was very lucky too. Oh, um, so for those who might be just be tuning in, uh, there's a it's it's almost like a tabletop RPG. There's a dice roll that's done every time you do a check. Uh, it rolls, I think, a d10 against your stats. So it was a strength check, and my strength is an eight. Um, so it turned out that uh, I, I rolled an eight of a potential ten and passed. Um, I was told that actually having your stats quite high, like six or higher or maybe seven or higher was kind of necessary to make rolls uh at all really survivable uh if it's a d10 my stats are in pretty good position aside from knowledge my knowledge is quite low i should probably raise my knowledge raise my knowledge for later uh but we'll hold out we'll hold out and i gain five exp the young man has glassy eyes and mumbles his replies between caressing his catch the beating movements in his arms disturb you. Man, this can happen more than once. Fine. Fine. I have the bonus stamina and I can restore stamina. So, uh, yeah. Uh, let's do the dialogue again, because we have new people and I like doing the creepy voice for him. It's a bad time to be out of cash, says the grim-looking man who's standing in your way. Ah, uh, the company, unfortunately, surprises and specializes in cases like yours, and will gladly help you get back on track. After all, he takes a step closer, and you can swear there is a faint smell of rust around the man. Everyone has something to sell. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna lose some stamina and gain some money. Ooh, I lose three stamina? That's, ooh. Mmm, <laughs> uh, that sucks ass. That was a lot of stamina loss. Uh, 
I do have the cash to buy an item, which I can then pitch to help their quest, though. So let's do that. Uh, I don't need another crowbar. Oh, all of these are expensive and doesn't actually do me anything super useful. Can I just stack? Or do I need to specifically equip this? Oh, I've had the I've had the flashlight. Rip. I've had the flashlight in my inventory this entire time and wasn't actually gaining the benefit the the benefit from my perception. I'm dumb. Wow, I didn't realize that. Well, it does mean that I can pitch the other one and complete the quest. Um, you find a huge pile of nets and hooks prepared for the big hunt. You quickly throw them into the ocean. Maybe that will stop them from sailing out. After a slow interrogation, the young man manages to stutter out something about an organized fishing trip. Uh, we're quite near the end of the scenario too, so that was a good time to find that out. God. Oh, bless. The waves wash lazily on the shore. You take a deep breath. The fresh sea air clears your head. And we reach the end of the scenario. We are astoundingly close to finishing a run. Not a blind run, because I've watched people play this game before, so I'm going in informed. But this is my first time playing through the game myself, and we're about to hit the end of the scenario. I still might die, bear in mind. I still might horrendously die. You slip out at night and race towards the beach, terrified of what might come next. The full moon shines bright in the cloudless night sky. The ink-black ocean waves glimmer eerily. All the residents have drawn their shutters tight and locked their doors. Your footsteps are silent in the sand. The only sounds are your ragged breathing and your pounding heartbeat. You arrive at the water's edge breathless. The possessed fishermen's boats fill their horizon, <laughs> fill the horizon with their light. Tiny yellow dots navigating across a dark ocean under a dark sky. You cannot make out the figures on board. It's not the sailors. The black beings must have left their bodies. Shocked, you watch as they sail you watch them sail their way out of the harbour. You are terrified of their power, but relieved they did not drag their meat puppets with them. The black beings never returned. Yet their mothers would not let their yet mothers would not let their children play on the beach. Over time, people forgot the last time they saw a boat out on the waves. Although some claim they see strange beings come into the port at night. Sorrowful saga of the Moonlight Sailors, ending A. Mm. So we've gained some more XP, which. Is pretty reasonable we've lost three percent doom now we have finished all five scenarios so you would figure that losing doom is not really that much of a big deal oh no oh no there is a decent chunk of game scenarios still left they basically put you through a stat gauntlet uh and that is uh actually also really insistent on taking doom off you so uh we are going to i think at this point um, go and cast that spell for free. So, uh, we... We got that boon where we didn't have to spend a cost. So hopefully, hopefully, this doesn't cost me for a reason or I'm going to be really annoyed. It still cost me for a reason. Fuck. F fuck my life. All right. Okay, fine. But our knowledge is higher and that knowledge check is actually pretty useful. So we're going to resolve that mystery. Uh, what's left? Cut from the outside world. The whole town stopped receiving an outside signal. The radio must failure. It must be the radio must failure. That's fine. Uh, so we're going to go home. We're going to take that key. We can't take a bath anymore. Because of the uh, scenario uh, that cut off our, our bath. So we're going to go and uh, we've solved all of our mysteries. So we're going to go back to the town screen and go to the lighthouse. Ooh, and there is a pitch down in the audio. It's spooky. 
The ominous lighthouse has been closed down now for longer than you can remember. Multiple padlocks prevent you from entering the building. You need five keys. So apparently this is a reminder of what kind of checks that will happen, but I don't know the game super well, so I couldn't tell you what those mean. Um, we can now enter the lighthouse. Oh, this is my favorite song in the game. You finally made it inside the cursed lighthouse. Your gut is telling you two things. Whoever or whatever is behind the weird events must be on the highest floor of this place, and that you should run as far as you can. You're afraid that there won't be a way back once you start climbing these stairs. We can rest a bit and increase doom. So I want to push my doom to about 80 and spend that 20% doom climbing the stairs. Yep. 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 Cool. Let's start climbing. Let's see if we die. Following the winding staircase, you are stopped by darkness. A thick black cloud is obscuring your vision and you can swear something is waiting for you inside it. So I have a flashlight. So this option, light your way, would not be available if I didn't have the flashlight equipped. So I'm glad I worked out that I could equip the flashlight before entering the scenario or we would be fucked. The light source. Oh, hello. <laughs> uh, thanks for joining. Thanks for, thanks for joining in. You are catching us at the tail end of this session of World of Horror. Uh, we have beaten five scenarios and we are climbing the tower where we get the coolest music in the game. Uh, we have done some careful preparations and we might be in a position to actually survive this encounter. In fact, we just leveled up, so let's go and, uh, yeah, 81% doom. Mmm, I intentionally boosted my doom so I could rest a whole bunch and raise my stats before we got in, uh, which was actually very, uh, I think, a sensible plan. Uh, so we have Outdoorsman plus Luck. I don't know if that's especially useful. Charisma might be useful. Faster offensive actions might also be useful. Right, 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 right. We're in pretty good health, so I don't think I need to increase my stamina or reason any, so I don't need to worry about that. I think under current circumstances, it's going to be increasing one, or maybe using this ability to increase maybe two of our stats. We attack quite quickly now because we have uh, the crowbar swings quite fast. So we can use this charisma, because I have a feeling we might run into somebody on the stairs. And then we can increase one of these by one. Our strength dex and perception are really high, so we don't need to worry about that too much, but we can probably increase our knowledge. So with knowledge and charisma at seven, and the other three at eight, reasonable dice luck. We can still roll a 10 and fuck ourselves anyway, but we we might, we might be able to get through this unscathed. Okay, okay, okay. Climbing the stairs. Following the winding staircase, you are stopped by a metal gate. The tiny page nailed to the gate explains that opening the gate will require you to grab two metal rods. Using your own body as a natural conductor will power up the gate. That seems like a dumb idea, but I have no other option other than to grab the metal rods, so uh, let's go! My knowledge is too low! <laughs> and I uh, lose three stamina. But I rested a lot, so I'm still at 10 stamina. I have no idea what the threshold is for this. It's not even a dice roll, it's just not having enough. Good to know. <laughs> Following the winding staircase, you find a metal gate that blocks your way. A cable that should be powering it is currently disconnected. The power box itself is covered in a weird, moist goo. Just inhaling the fumes makes your eyes itch and water, but to power the gate you'll need to disconnect a faulty plug. I have high enough strength, however. The, ex the EXP is not especially useful, I've just leveled up, but thanks. Weird goo burns your fingers, but you quickly manage to separate the faulty plug and connect the proper cable. 
With a buzz, the gate opens. Hmm. Following the winding staircase, you are stop. Wait a minute. Someone has been taking your photos. They focus on the enemies you fought with. There's something wrong, but you can't precisely say what. Select the enemy you fought as the second one. Ooh, that's hard. Headless man that can be fought first. Ah. Oh. We definitely fought Headless Mannequin first. Uh, I can't remember. Oh, no, no, no. No, we ran from a Twisted Corpse and I decided to try and clap my way through a Burning Man. Uh, so, I think... I think... I think it's Burning Man. Wrong answer. And I increased Doom. Okay. I'm at 90% Doom, but 10% Doom remaining is actually pretty good. So we stand in pretty reasonable stead to work our way through. Ah, uh, your head starts to hurt. Is everything something you've imagined? The photos suddenly disappear, but so does the door, allowing you to continue. A fight. Climbing up the winding staircase, you were stopped by a masked man wearing an expensive suit. <sighs> He says, taking the jacket and the mask off. Nothing personal, really. <laughs> yes, uh, we have an ally who follows us. Uh, it is uh, Kana, who lowers the amount of damage we take and has probably been uh, pretty essential in not completely eating shit in this adventure. Uh, I can send them against the enemy, which removes them from my party, but frees up a turn. Uh, so, this enemy deals damage only. Kana OP, yes. <laughs> uh, Kana has definitely, uh, there's definitely been enemies that would have done me way too much sanity damage to survive. So, I have specifically not sacrificed her. Um, I've seen people who've been playing this game that'll sacrifice Kana immediately, and I'm like, mmm, mmm, you sure about that girl? You sure? Uh, okay, okay, okay. Them dealing Doom? Not bad. Not bad. One Doom a turn, I can, I can survive... I don't know how many rounds we have left, so I can, I, we can survive, I think, six rounds. 26 HP at, uh, hmm. Yeah, you caught us right at the end, Pixie. Uh, this guy's, this guy's face. Hoo hoo. Hoo hoo hoo. Yes, Manly Bad Hasiru has done a number of streams of this. He's really, really good, uh, horror video game YouTuber. Um, I love the music in this game. This particular song that you're hearing as we do, it's like the forest theme, but it's also, uh, the fight that we get in the tower. It's like this cool prog rock fight, this prog rock kind of vibe, and, huh. Right, we need to do some maths. So 26 HP. What but what damage does our crowbar do? Our crowbar does four damage. We hit with 70% chance. He Ooh, he is lowering us by 35. Uh meaning that we can't just swing randomly. Uh that is that is way, way worse. Way, way worse than a 50% chance. Uh <laughs> So uh, we are gonna have to. Oh, and it, it's uh, seven. It's gonna take about seven hits to kill this guy. All right. So uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's guarantee the amount of damage that we deal. Another stream I watched play this game is basically jo had John Cena as his ally. I think you can get the Rock to join you. <laughs> I think you can get the Rock to join you. But these sparkly anime eyes, which is wild. So strange. Um, but yeah, 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 okay. So we have the ability to prep our attacks. I'm going to explain through combat for those who uh, are just tuning in and don't know how this game works. This game is all about measuring the amount of time it takes to do things against rolling the dice on whether you can just deal damage anyway. This guy is really, really 
is uh, lowering our de chance to hit by 35, which is miserable. We cannot just swing against this guy randomly. He is going to just nimbly dodge out the way. His dexterity stat is super high. He's cast double team on himself like eight times, throwing sand attack in our eyes. We are not going to hit him straight up. So we need, need to use uh, prepare your attack. My hand is shaking slightly. I'm genuinely nervous about whether we're going to finish this. Um, preparing our attack means that we are guaranteed to hit. Super necessary. We deal four damage every time we hit. Cool. Uh, we need to hit him, I think, seven times. Um, and we can attack twice. That's six damage. Hmm, if we deal six damage, does that make that better? <laughs> Again, uh, to remind, I am multiple drinks in and I'm bad at math, so I don't know why I decided to do a really math-heavy game <laughs> to stream while sozzled. Uh, I can do this five times if I do a power attack, uh, but, but I can only do that once per turn, whereas otherwise I would be hitting twice. So no, mathematically, mathematically, we need to prep and strike twice to hit him f twice per turn, and then it'll be three round, four rounds. Four rounds, and we guarantee our victory. Alright, here we go. I'll save that. Save it so I can do it again. Down to 22, down to 18. My doom increases. Down to 14, down to 10. My doom increases. I am badly bleeding. Ooh. Uh, losing one stamina each investigation. There are no investigations left, baby. Don't care. Too late for you to uh, put that uh, on me. Two HP left. Right. Prepare. Strike. Die. <laughs> 12 EXP, which I don't need. 94 hit we made it we're at the top it's the final room we made it and we have six percent doom to spare mm. the dark clouds swirl around the lighthouse did you arrive too late can i break it ah uh As the unnatural fog slowly lifts, you are relieved and collapse upon the floor. We made it with so much health left. <laughs> oh man, I mean, okay, we are branded. Uh, we are badly bleeding. We are horrendously paranoid and we have fish gills. But by gum, we made it. Oh yeah, yeah, Persona 4 flashbacks, hell yeah. I need to play Persona 4 Golden for this channel. It was on sale a couple days ago. Uh, for like a small amount of money, it was like 12 quid rather than 16. You know how like big name games go on sale. Obviously not at all, but uh, I do want to play that. I need to decide what dungeon I want to play for it on stream because I'm not just going to play all of it on stream, you know what I mean? So I want to pick a dungeon that fits really well. Um, whether that's going to be Kanji or Naoto's dungeon, because both of those characters mean the most to me. But anyway. Um, mm. The next day, everything feels like a bad dream. We've managed to stop the ritual awakening the eldritch old god, but what's done is done. It will stir in its slumber again and again, until the stars are right again. Congratulations. You were safe. For now. <laughs> We have survived on the easiest difficulty. Uh, so uh, we managed to survive five mysteries, 31 new events, nine new enemies, and seven new achievements. Uh, this game is super not in your favor. Even on that easiest difficulty, the game uh, actively uh, spends time in rolling events that do nothing but just harm you. And you need to, to be able to do really, really well in the higher difficulties, you just need to know all the scenarios inside out and not accidentally choose the scenarios that F you up. But we did it. We made it. And with that, 
let's go back to the book club to see more briefly and uh, the vibes return uh, please let me know if the book club music vibes are too loud um <laughs> uh, yeah we we made it through a session of world of horror and i was not expecting to uh nathan blades bad at video games uh managed to go and play a horror video game um and not die horrendously uh, although i guess my kind of tabletop rpg knowledge means that I was able to go and do a little bit of strategizing, thinking through real carefully to make a way on the other side. <laughs> uh, right, right, right. Um, I'm gonna go and wrap up what we do normally on the show in terms of like talking about, oh, so the, for those who don't know, um, in addition to doing tabletop RPG streams on the Neon Caster, uh, we like to do book club streams. So we do both Urban Fantasy Book Club and uh, uh, Cyberpunk Book Club. Um, which is all about, because I can't play games well or fast, playing through games as media texts. So we explore uh, what they are trying to do in terms of their design, in terms of their story, and then take some of the ideas away from that, and then maybe apply that to some of the work that we're doing going forward. I actually have multiple Halloween uh, tabletop RPG sessions, some of them stream, some not, uh, coming up this month. So playing through this actually has given me some interesting ideas. So we were talking a little bit earlier when we started the stream uh, about what we expected from this game. Uh, it was really heavily inspired by the works of Junji Ito and Lovecraft. Uh, so the cosmic horror and body horror. Uh, some of the enemies that you fight in this game, who boy, oh my god. Um, <laughs> they they are definitely, definitely, def whoa. God, did I just get an accidental jump scare there? Rip. Uh, bruh. Uh, uh, the game just buzzed at me. So I'm just going to cl close the game so it doesn't buzz at me again. I actually jumped in real life. <laughs> Shit. Um, but yeah, yeah, some of, the, some of the enemies in this game. There's like the lady who has uh, three heads stacked on top of each other with just one mouth. Uh, and it glitches out horribly if you do the ritual wrong. And ah, uh, no, not today. Mm -mm. I, I ain't a religious person, but that creature needs Jesus. Uh... <laughs> but yes, uh, ideas to take away. Um, I think one of the things, there's, you can get some really effective horror from really simple visuals. Is one of the, uh, I, I think, a, a, a really strong idea to kind of take away from this, you know? Um, the, the game... Uh, is entirely in one or two bit. I was playing in two bits, so I had additional colors, but you can play in one bit and play the game in just black and white or two contrasting colors. It gives you a wide range um, if you want. And despite that, it manages to do a bunch of really interesting visual effects. Uh, even though the music is chiptune, it does a lot with speeding it up and slowing it down uh, and layering instruments in and taking them away. So even though there isn't a lot of visual elements in, you can still do a lot with that. Um, I am trying myself uh, to do a lot more drawn artwork for my tabletop RPG games um, in the, the Arcana Core uh, tabletop RPG campaign that we've been doing on stream. Um, some of the portraits that we use I have commissioned out, but I am trying to draw a lot of them myself. Uh, as both uh, a kind of like te uh, test of my own skills and improving, but also just kind of like, you know, uh, being able to relish in the ability that you have. So when you're making work, you don't necessarily need super super fancy graphics uh you don't need to go and be a wonderful artist you can uh carry a lot of information and a lot of uh, emotion uh with really really simple graphics and maybe if you're trying to do horror and you're not being a good artist it's maybe a good thing <laughs> uh if your if your faces don't look superhuman if your faces don't look like uh, an ordinary human face then you can play that for horror and then that's intentional and you don't need to um what other what other interesting uh, bits and pieces that we can take away from this um i really like i really like how this game uh using uh the slow loss of resources to uh not trick trick isn't the right word but encourage bad decisions uh 
Oh. <laughs> Spell decisions. It's tired and drunk. Leave me alone. There we go, we did it. Um, yeah, so you might have noticed that when we were doing the final challenge, uh, we had the option to rest before going up the lighthouse tower. And every time you rest, that restores one point of physical and mental health, but it also increases your doom clock. And by that point, you've been going through five scenarios and your doom clock is quite high and it's forcing you, forcing you to weigh up how much you value your own health versus how much time you think you have to kind of proceed. Um, and that's really, really clever. That was really, really clever. I carefully managed my own time so I could afford to rest a whole bunch before we proceeded. But say that my health was quite low. If my, because I didn't take any damage when we were crawling up that tower and it worked out that I restored all that health for nothing. But if I was at like three sanity and I needed to do that entire tower, how willing would I be to spend that additional doom to work my way up and I need to make those careful decisions as you play and tabletop RPGs encourage that quite a bit especially with games that are more like Dungeons and Dragons where resource management is really important so uh, in Dungeons and Dragons uh, all the spell casters all the major classes have spell slots uh, which is you can cast certain spells x number of times per day and then when you run out you need to rest but as, as somebody running the game I might put in a lot of scenarios that would encourage the use of my party's spells. And because I'm the person who's organizing the game, I know what spells my players have. So I can in specifically engineer circumstances that would make my players be like, well, I have a spell that can make somebody fall asleep and a sleep spell would be really useful here. So I should use it now. But what if later down the line, I need to use the sleep spell? Do I weigh up using my resources now? or later. And then making that decision A, interesting, and B, not making the players mad on the other side when they were like agonizing over it for nothing, because that can feel bad when you spend a large amount of actual real time in the world thinking about your options. Uh, going into that last fight with 95% Doom would have encouraged you to consider either playing it safe and risking max Doom or taking a chance with a hit percent. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah, if my Doom was really, really high, I would be like, well, I can't have this take on multiple rounds. I can't spend my time lining up a shot and swinging. So I had to work out how many rounds I could safely take, wondering if there would be some other challenges after that, and then calculating my strategy. If I had higher Doom or if I uh, knew that would be more rounds, I would have to strategize that way differently. I would have to think about that way differently. I was very lucky that that was the last challenge in the, in the run. Hmm, what other, there's probably a third thing to take away here that's quite interesting. I think it's using a lot of, um, not being afraid to use your references on your sleeve. <laughs> Afrid. yeah. Uh, the designer of this game uh, was really, really upfront about the influences of Junji Ito, uh, who did Uzumaki and uh, Gyo and um, a handful of different horror manga. Oh, the um, Mystery of Amagara Fault, which is, I think, my favorite one. He's a very, very prolific uh, manga art mangaka who uh, conveys horror both on the page turn, so not revealing the shock until you turn the page, which is actually a really, really clever uh, piece of comic design. When you're designing a comic, you always need to think about what you're going to see when you turn the page, but also about using really realistic, detailed ink work to convey horror. And this game has pixel art, so it can't go super detailed, but it does make those choices between when it renders just a normal anime face and a more detailed gross face. Uh, there's a, a scene that in, in our run earlier on you can watch the, uh, the VOD um, I, I mirror all my uh, videos to both Twitch and to YouTube um, I should probably brand my YouTube better but it's fine uh, you can find it by looking at the, twi the uh, my, my Twitter below um, uh, earlier on we had a, a thing about investigating some eerie eels and there was a scene where we needed to poke uh, our ally Kana in the eye so eels gushed out of her eye and that was super detailed in a game where there wasn't really much detail at all they spend time making that specific scene horrifying um and that particular jump in detail was is, is very jinji ito 
but also the kind of Elder Gods is super, super Lovecraft. Um, there are some enemies and a lot of items and some meme stuff that references just general pop culture in this game. We didn't run into The Rock, uh, like Dwayne The Rock Johnson. He's in this game for some reason. Uh, we didn't run into that those kind of references, but they're there. They're there. Uh, so... And that's a, it doesn't feel like a bad thing necessarily. I think it does it elegantly. There are definitely other games out there that um, use references and I think a very heavy handed way. If you've ever played Guacamole, which is a pretty interesting kind of like Metroidvania puzzle platformer that uses uh, Mexican wrestling as its in and uh, Mexican mythology as its influences. But there's lots of billboards in that game and all the billboards are references to memes at the time the game came out, and they were old memes at the time the game came out, and it dates horribly. Those references didn't really have anything to do with the game itself, they were just there, so you as a player would be like, I remember that, and remembering things as humour, ha ha ha. Uh, but this game is using, for the most part, a lot of its eldritch horror references specifically to craft the experience, and I like that, I think that's clever. Um, I mean, I say that off the back of doing a tabletop RPG campaign, really inspired by the Persona video games, and it's pretty obvious how it's how it's inspired by that. Not really using any specific uh, characters or plot beats necessarily, or at least not intentionally, but those references come through. Um, hmm, what is city life to this game? So, uh, just to, to, to kind of wrap up our venture, normal text, there we go. So, uh, when we do Cyberpunk Book Club, uh, the final question that we talk about is what is cyberpunk to this game? Uh, but this is the Urban Fantasy Book Club, so we're talking about what is city life to this game. Because it's not high fantasy, we're not uh, adventuring in the mountains with some dragons. This is fantasy that is grounded within our everyday life, and it uses the context of our everyday life to set its premise. Uh, so what about everyday life is this game pulling on to uh, give its theme and its reason for existing? Um, I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to actually, you know, since we, we have uh, some, some people in the chat. What do you guys think? What do you, what do you, what do you think this game, uh, uh, World of Horror, is trying to say about, about the, um, about the human experience, the day to day experience? Um, I, uh, <laughs> oh, is that, is that, is that too, is that too bold or too deep of a question? I mean, you know, um. Uh, I, I, I guess what may, well, at least I, I'll spitball for a bit. What this makes me think about, because we are currently going through, uh, you know, circumstances. There is a there is a creeping horror in our everyday life at time of recording about uh, illness and one's health and one's physical health and one's mental health is super important at the moment. Um, because you know, uh, we are both. Our physical health is under concern because of the, the, the pandemic that's going around. And our mental health is of concern because we're forced to sit indoors all day for our own health, for good reason, uh, and try not to think about the world being on fire. And that balancing of physical and mental health is, uh, is really, really important to our daily function and paying attention to when one of those is getting low. Um, yeah, the virus and the parasitic natures of, uh, and in terms of how the enemies appear. Yeah, yeah. A lot of the enemies in this game are humans but wrong. <laughs> you very, very rarely encounter another person in this game who isn't horrendously effed up. Uh, that's a very, very good point, Pixie. Thanks for bringing that up. So let's go, let's go, let's go talk about that first. Um, uh, the inherent... Uh, weirdness, sinisterness of strangers is, I think, did I spell that wrong? No, I didn't. Uh, the weirdness and the, the inherent weirdness and sinisterness of strangers. Yeah, 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 I think that's a good, a good way of framing that. Because in an average city, there are a lot of people and we don't really know any of them, you know. Uh, we, we, we aren't living that animal crossing life. There aren't just... 10 people and a raccoon uh, that are part of our day-to-day -day being. There are all sorts of people in your neighborhood. And I'm sure, I'm sure you can think of people in your neighborhood that are maybe slightly strange or you come across as slightly strange. Are they strange? Are they dangerous? They're probably not. They're probably just entirely ordinary people. But there's something in the back of your mind that makes you think about what would happen if they were weird. And this game, I think, is playing on that. A lot of uh, horror medium, horror medium as a genre plays quite heavily, I think, on um, uh, the weird unknowingness of uh, the weird unknowableness of other people. Uh, some games, put, some horror 
uh, franchises play that poorly uh, when it starts talking about races as the unknowable other. Looks at Lovecraft. Uh, this game does not do. Thank God. Thank God that this game does not do that. <laughs> uh, but also queerness sometimes can be the scary other in a lot of horror things. Uh, you might be able to think of villains and things that are coded as being uh, very fabulous, uh, elaborate men who are also incredibly violent and scary. So there are plenty of works that talk about unknowable humans, but in a very uh, uh, unpleasant way. And sometimes we reclaim that. I myself, uh, as a horror fan, uh, tend to reclaim uh, the idea that there are some people in the world that see me as a monster and absolutely these painted nails rend flesh <laughs> um, but yeah thinking about that and the nature of how you represent other people as scary is an interesting thing to explore um, but yeah, I, I think uh, this is probably not the intention of the game because this game was released before the pandemic but um, the uh, balancing of one's uh, physical and mental health is important. I think is just a really good and important idea to take away uh, just in general. <laughs> Uh, everybody really should look after themselves. I should look after myself. I don't look after myself anywhere near as much as I do. More than, more now, actually, weirdly enough, under these circumstances than in the past. I think as, uh, I think as we grow and understand ourselves better, we become better at looking after ourselves more. Um, but if there was ever a game to, re to, to think about where one's sanity is actually really important and not just how much blood is pumping around you, uh, uh, this game is definitely going to be one of them. Uh, and on that note, we can start wrapping up the show. Before we wrap up the show for real for reals, uh, let's just go and talk a little bit about what is coming up in uh, this week and next. So uh, this Friday, this Friday, we are going to be having another session of Arcana Core. Yes, I know we normally stream on uh, Saturdays uh, for sessions of Arcana Core, but we are wrapping up uh, case two. Uh, judge, Jury, and Executioner, um, uh, which is uh, being very, very fun. There is a big boss fight uh, that's going to be happening. Uh, so we'd like to wrap that up. That's going to be happening at 7 p.m. Uh, British time, uh, 2 p.m. Eastern. Uh, we're going to be wrapping up that scenario. Uh, there's going to be some high drama. I'm going to be enjoying that a lot. Uh, uh, my, my players have been talking to me off, off camera, off mic, about some of the interesting character things that they want to do. And that's going to be super, super juicy. So that is coming up on Friday. This Friday at 7 p.m. British time. Uh, next Saturday. Next Saturday is... What's the date of that? Saturday 24th at 6 p.m. so that would be roughly our usual time for streaming we are going to be streaming a session of mystic lilies uh, mystic lilies is a tabletop rpg system that is all about witches betraying each other uh, designed uh, by friend of the show and fellow performer will you will yule who will also be uh, one of the characters on it we're going to be using the arcana core cast to be playing out this system uh the session that we're going to be doing is going to be called the kairos game uh, which is a a session that i a, a, a scenario that i designed for the game uh, when the game finally releases in pdf and book format one of my scenarios that i've written will be in the book which is really exciting Exciting. Um, I love I love the fact that I uh, get to occasionally be paid to write RPGs for people. That's great. Um, and it's going to and the Kairos game is inspired by uh, death game anime and video games. So if you've ever played Danganronpa, uh, if you've ever uh, watched like Cube or like Saw or like um, Junie Tyson, um, those kind of games, it's that kind of energy uh, where where it's lots of people who have to work together, but then they're going to have to betray each other to survive. So that's going to be really, really exciting. That's going to be happening at 6 p.m. at British Standard Time, uh, British Summer Time. I guess, uh, well, the clocks might change, but it's going to be 6 p.m. our time. Uh, it's going to be 1 p.m. Eastern, um, and that's going to be here on the Saturday, the 24th. Yes, 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 yes. Um, and those are the two big streams that are coming up. Uh, we might be doing some other mini streams later this month, but those are not set in stone. But those are the two big ones that are going to be happening. Very exciting, very exciting. Um, what else is there even to say? 
Cypher, so thank you for tuning in on this particular adventure of mine where we played World of Horror. Um, if you would like to uh, chat with me about the design of horror games, because absolutely talk with me about the design of horror games, you can hit me up on Twitter just below Phantom Art Scent. Um, that's the, the Twitter, the handle that I use for all of my creative stuff. Um, if you would like to support me on Patreon, which I can use to, uh, currently I've been using that uh, for the purchasing of new games to play on book clubs and also uh, using it to pay artists uh, to design tokens for Arcana Core. Actually, Pixie is in the chat right now and Pixie is actually an incredible artist and I haven't commissioned Pixie for anything on the stream yet. But uh, if you would like me to commission Pixie on the stream, uh, you can absolutely uh, uh, give money to me on Phantom Art Scent and uh, I will use that to commission a wide variety of things. If you if you if you uh, donate on Patreon, you have access to a wide variety of uh, both uh, one-page RPGs, micro RPGs that I've written, as well as uh, scenarios and a wide variety of games. So you get a little thing back. You're not just supporting me and the channel. You're supporting it that way too. Right. That is everything. I hope you all have a fantastic evening. That you all have a delightfully spooky October, and I will see you all next time in the future. <laughs> <laughs>